What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kevin Jackowitz, this is The Cage Review, and this is a review for Monday Night Raw, and this is for 5 2019. Um, I don't know what to make of this one. Um, Raw and, and SmackDown really have just been really lackluster in the last several months. Uh, they've done fairly decent with pay-per-views, but when it comes to their original programming uh, on Raw and SmackDown, WWE has just failed miserably, for the most part. Uh, not 100%, but they're just getting to a point where they need new leadership. They need fresh input. They need fresh storylines. Uh, there were a couple of things about this show that were just so absolutely cringeworthy. And other things that were just like a throwback to um, a time where wrestling was actually cool. And none of it really worked in today's uh, wrestling world. So, you start out with Brock Lesnar. He's got the Money in the Bank briefcase that he won last night. I really didn't like that. Only because Brock Lesnar wasn't even in the match. And this is one of the big problems that people have with Brock Lesnar. He shows up every once in a while. He doesn't really do anything. He's really adding nothing to the product anymore. He's an attraction at times. But even that is worn thin, I think. And so... I just have this feeling that we're going to run right back into the shit that people hated about uh, utilizing Brock Lesnar in the first place. It's just going to make people really hate him. And, you know, it is what it is. So Paul Heyman comes down with Brock Lesnar, cuts his promo. Seth Rollins comes out, says, you know what, I've already beat you. I'm not going to stand and worry about what you're going to do with this briefcase. Let's do something tonight. He starts shoving Brock Lesnar. Paul Heyman says... What makes you think you're the one that's going to be, you know, Brock Lesnar's going after? Kofi Kingston comes out, says, I want to be the best, which means I have to beat the best, which means i got to beat Brock Lesnar. Um, and it all comes down to basically live in fear. Brock Lesnar has the briefcase. So that's where they end that. Backstage, Sami Zayn goes up to Bobby Lashley asking for help with Braun Strowman. Bobby Lashley says no. Says, go soften him up for me. Not really an important bit. Another backstage bit after commercial, Triple H tells Seth Rollins and Kofi Kingston they have a tag team match with Baron Corbin and Bobby Lashley. And I don't know why these two are in the main event scene every week. I don't get it. Bobby Lashley has zero personality. Uh, his promos have been terrible since coming back. And I actually liked him in TNA, but I'm just not with it anymore. He, he's done nothing in WWE. Which might be WWE's fault because they've proven how bad they can screw somebody up. And Baron Corbin is just not good at anything. He's not great on the mic. He's not great in the ring. He's bland as hell. So we have that main event to look forward to. Um, not really interested at all. Braun Strowman versus Sami Zayn is next. It kind of goes from the ring to the back, back to the ring. Um, bronze, it was a squash match, really. I mean, they just killed Sami Zayn coming back. Of course they did, because they don't know what to do with somebody like Sami Zayn. So, uh, yeah, it was kind of pointless. Charlie interviews Lars Sullivan in the ring. Lucha House Party come down, they get some licks in. And then they all three have to retreat, because Lars Sullivan is a beast. So, that was... Whatever. Ricochet versus Cesaro is next. Um, this is another situation. Bringing someone up from NXT and just making him lose a bunch of times. Discrediting anything about the man before he even gets his first ball rolling. So it was a good match. They had some really good spots. Uh, Ricochet and Cesaro worked great together. Um, they had some really cool stuff. Uh, one point, Ricochet standing on Cesaro's shoulders and does a backflip off of him. Uh, it was really cool, really well done. But at the end of the day, they buried Ricochet. And I love Cesaro. I, I definitely think he deserves something. So it's a catch-22 for sure. But I, you know, Ricochet just coming up, not getting anything really. So it sucks to see. Uh, from there, Charlie interviews AJ Styles, who is interrupted by Baron Corbin. Uh, nothing of interest here, honestly. And then after that, you have in-ring promo from Roman Reigns. He gets interrupted by Shane McMahon. 
They start talking back and forth. Apparently they have a match at the Super Showdown. I don't care. I, I just don't. So that's that. Backstage Shane McMahon interview. Really amounts to nothing, honestly. Um, got to find my place here. I got a lot of notes here, sorry. The Usos versus The Revival is next. This is a decent match. I, I like this match actually quite a bit. Um, the Revival, they're pissed off. They're aggressive. It looked good. There was a lot of good back and forth between the two, a lot of good spots. Um, of course, the Usos always flying around and then doing their exchanges of super kicks and stuff like that. But it works. It's, it's fun to watch. It's very entertaining. At the end of the day, the Revival, uh, they roll up one of the Usos, get a handful of tights, and get the pin. So we'll see what happens from there. After that, you have a backstage Alexa Bliss, Nikki Cross bit, where Nikki's saying she had her hand on the briefcase, and then the Revival come out like we just beat the Usos. They're all excited, and it was all pointless. After that, you get a moment of bliss with Nikki Cross. They bring out Becky Lynch. And honestly, this was just a clusterfuck. This whole segment really was just bad. Uh, the Iconics come out. They're talking trash to Becky Lynch. Lacey Evans comes out. They're talking trash. Um, so it turns into essentially a three-on-three, -three, although it's really a two-on-three because Alexa Bliss wasn't you know, really able to compete that much. But it turns into Becky Lynch, Nikki Cross, and Alexa Bliss versus the Iconics. And Lacey Evans, the Iconics and Lacey Evans are really not much to be desired in the ring. So, guess who carries the match? Um, thankfully, Alexa Bliss, Nikki Cross, Becky Lynch get the win. And there you go. The whole thing I didn't care about at all. After that, you have Mick Foley. He comes out, he introduces his new belt they've been building up and this was meant to be a throwback to the hardcore title that WWE had that could be defended 24-7. This belt is literally called the 24-7 belt. It's got a big 24-7 on it, which is one of the key marquee logos of WWE. Uh, it was an ugly ass belt. It was a stupid concept. This is another Vince McMahonism. He just needs to retire. Hand it over to somebody that can do something with this company. Because literally every major decision he's had lately has been not just bad, but horrific. Uh, the Viking Raiders, Vince McMahon all over it. The Lars Sullivan Bill, Vince McMahon all over it. Uh, what is it, though? I can't even remember what they're calling Asuka and Kyrie saying now, but I remember it's something absolutely atrocious. Kabuki Warriors. Absolutely horrible. Uh, Brock Lesnar at Money in the Bank. Horrible idea. This 24-7 belt. Horrible idea. Uh, it just, it's not going to sell. It's not. They need to come up with new ideas. Vince McMahon is stuck in the past. He keeps rehashing the same shit he's been doing forever. So poor Mick Foley is getting booed by the audience when they see this belt and they get the gist of what's going on. And Mick Foley really didn't deserve that, but it just goes to show how dumb of a decision it was. And it goes nowhere, man. Like, this is going to be one of the most pointless titles ever made. And nobody's going to care about it. Because instantly, it was a bunch of absolute nobodies that haven't been used fighting for this belt. The first winner was Titus O'Neil. That tells you something right there. I love Titus O'Neil. I think he's great. They've done nothing with him. On the ramp, he gets hit by Robert Roode, another guy who hasn't done a lot. I mean, he's done more than Titus, but, you know. Um, so, Robert Roode is the one who leaves with the belt. It's just a bad, bad, bad situation there. That's not going to go anywhere. The Miz faces Drew McIntyre afterwards. Uh, they had a bit. Or Shane McMahon, while he was talking, you know, was dealing with The Miz, he brings out Drew McIntyre. So that makes that match, and it really made Drew look weak because Miz had a lot of strong spots. 
you knew the Miz wasn't gonna win because if they did, that would just be time to just turn off WWE completely, even on YouTube. Which I'm not saying it's not now. Honestly, it's terrible. Uh, so Shane McMahon, of course, he gets involved when the referee is distracted. Drew McIntyre gets the win. Uh, Roman Reigns comes out after, and they have a little scuffle, and that was it. You get a Samoa Joe promo. Uh, I really like Samoa Joe. He's got a great personality. Uh, when it comes to promos, yeah, I think he's one of the best. I really do. Uh, even simple stuff, even the most like little minute things, Joe can just make sound great. And so this was obviously a promo on Rey Mysterio, and that feud continues. Uh, after that, you get a bit where Robert Roode is being chased by a bunch of these mid-card, low-card nobodies. Uh, R-Truth hides him in a trunk, and then when everybody's run past him, R-Truth opens the trunk. There's a referee in the limo of the car that he was hiding in. R-Truth bashes Robert Roode up against the limo, gets the pin. He's the new 24-7 champion. Three champions already. Same dumb shit that they used to do. And at least it used to be kind of funny. Now it's just pointless. It really is. So after that, you get Kofi Kingston, Seth Rollins versus Baron Corbin and Bobby Lashley. Uh, I'm going to fast forward. Kofi Kingston, his trouble in paradise. Um, I think it was Corbin. So the, the faces get the win. Brock Lesnar comes out. He kind of stalks the ring for a second and walks back up the ramp and that's really all it came down to and so now we have Brock Lesnar in this situation where he is going to be toying with whoever and I don't know man I just don't know I don't know how I feel about any of it to be very honest um I think Brock Lesnar coming back this soon after getting all the shit he got for not showing up if he doesn't make a lot of appearances, it's pointless. Like, honestly, at that point, it's just like, you know what? You're doing the wrong thing. I understand he wants limited dates, but you got to think about what the fan base is going to react with. And I, I believe that they're going to react very strongly. I think at this point, fans really are getting sick and tired of the crap we're being served with WWE. And it's just... I mean, I, for one, am just sick of it. You know, I canceled the network. I'm not watching wrestling on TV. I watch it on YouTube. I don't care if I, if I miss it. Like, if they block the videos on YouTube and I can't watch Raw or SmackDown, I don't care. Like, that's just where I'm at with WWE. I don't care if I see it or not. Uh, I do these reviews because sometimes people pay attention to them. Honestly, sometimes people don't. Um... And that's just kind of the state of where WWE is, too. I think if they had a better product, more people would be interested, more people would pay attention to the conversation. There's a, a few wrestling channels that are doing fairly well for themselves. Honestly, not many. Um, so, I mean, at this point, I'm just looking toward AEW and hoping that they bring something different to the table. Like, I, I'm hoping that it works out and that they can actually give WWE some competition because that's what we need. We need the days of like the Monday Night Wars. Because wrestling sucks now. This show in particular, uh, it had a couple of really good matches actually. I like the Usos versus the Revival. I thought that was a good match. Um, and I gotta try to find the other one here. Ricochet and Cesaro. That was the other like really, really cool match that I liked. Um, everything else was just kind of there. And... I don't know, man. Like, the intro got me interested a little bit with the Brock Lesnar-Paul Heyman promo with Seth Rollins and Kofi Kingston. I did like that. Um, but really, other than that, I mean, you've got two matches and one good bit in a three-hour show and an absolute joke of a title introduced, and, like, that whole thing went over not at all. Uh, so, overall, I'm going to give this a 4 out of 10. Uh, there were some things I liked about it, but honestly, there are a lot of things that need work when it comes to WWE. So that's where I'm at with it. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. I think that's probably stronger than it deserves, honestly. But whatever. Uh, I feel charitable. 
So that's where I'm at. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. My name is Kevin Jackwitz, Cage Nation, out. Bye.